and welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. In this episode, we're going to learn how to crochet the knit-like scarf. And we're going to do that using the Tunisian crochet technique. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com and you can get the link to this pattern in the description below. To complete your scarf, you're going to need two skeins of Red Heart Unforgettable in the colorway Sunrise if you're doing the exact same scarf as me, however they have a wide variety of beautiful colors. You're also going to need a size 5.5mm crochet hook, and that is the Tunisian crochet hook, so 5.5mm Tunisian, or those are sometimes called Afghan hook. So if you're using the same setup, you're going to need to grab your 5.5mm hook, and then I am using one of the shortest cords that I have. This is an 8 inch and then of course your stopper on the end. To begin our scarves, it's going to start off very similar to how we would start a normal crochet scarf. We're just going to change things up since it's Tunisian. So we want to create a slip knot. Now we want to make 28 chains. Now if this is your first experience with Tunisian crochet, you're going to see that it's quite different from our regular crocheting methods. And what you're going to see is that to complete a row, we're going to have a forward pass where we collect all the stitches on our hook and then we're going to have a backward pass where we're going to be working the loops off of the hook. So keeping that in mind, you're never actually going to finish a row when you're on your forward pass if you're just collecting stitches like normal. There is a, a bind off technique and we'll talk about that once we get to that point in this scarf. So we're going to skip that very first chain. Now it's quite small on mine but you can see that this is the last chain that I made and I want to skip that one and work in my second chain. Now you might also notice that I have my chain flipped upside down. So these bars that you see here are the back bar of the chain. So you don't actually have to work in these back bars. You can work in any loop of the chain, just like if we were doing regular crochet. But I find that you get a neater and a stretchier beginning if you work in these back loops. So that's what I'm going to do. You can do whatever is comfortable for you. So we just insert our hook into the first chain, yarn over, and pull a loop through. And we're going to leave it there. I typically like to push my loops back on the hook so that I'm past the neck where it's in the correct size. And then we'll do that for the next chain. Push that on and leave it there. And the next. And of all of this project, I would say this part here requires the most patience because it's not that easy to work into the chains. And then if you're just getting the feel for Tunisian crochet, it's probably going to feel a little bit strange keeping the loops on your hook, but you'll get yourself into a rhythm. So what I need for you to do at this point is just work a stitch onto all of our chains. So just like we're doing. Every now and then I'll take a, a, a short little break to kind of correct the tension, make sure my loops aren't too tight on the hook. You definitely want to have some movement here. You want to be able to slide them very easily up and down your hook. If you can't do so and you need to, to pull it back, say you have a loop that's just too tight or you can't really work with it or maybe it's too loose. If you need to drop one of your loops, all you're going to do is just pull your hook out of that loop that you want. Or say 
you wanted to drop this one back here, then you'd have to pull back through all of those. Okay, then you want to keep the loops on your hook that you want to keep there, and then just pull your working yarn. Okay, so that would be a little troubleshooting tip if you do have to rip back. This frogging is a little bit different for Tunisian than it is regular crochet. Once you've finished up your chain, we want to do a quick count and make sure that we have 28 loops on our hook. And this part's really important because we need to be working in a multiple of two. So the width of this scarf is 28 stitches. You could change it if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it wider or uh, shorter, and you could do so by keeping it in a multiple of two. So double check, make sure you have 28 stitches. I have already double counted, and so we're gonna move on to the next step. We've completed the forward pass for the first row. Now we need to complete the backward pass for the first row. The first stitch on the backward pass is always going to be the same. No matter which stitch we're working in, it's always going to be that we'll yarn over and we'll pull through just this first loop on our hook. And that is going to help us have a neat sort of braided edge on the side. So this part is really, really important. Just yarn over and pull through one. If you happen to make a mistake and you pull through two of those loops, you're going to be decreasing your stitches. So if you've been doing this for a little while, once we get a, a few rows in, if you notice it getting shorter on one side, on this side specifically, that's because you're dropping stitches by not doing that first stitch correctly. Now the rest of the stitches are the same. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So we'll pull through this loop right here in this loop right here. And then yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you'll notice what I like to do in order to make this easier to accomplish is you'll notice that when I yarn over, with these fingers I'm pulling down on the work and with my hook I'm, I'm pushing up. And see how that kind of opens up those stitches? It makes the hook glide through a little bit easier. Okay, when we have our last two remaining loops, you work at the same yarn over and pull through. And there we have finished up that first row. Now it doesn't look like much, so technically the row isn't finished, but it's set up for us to work our next row. And once we work a few stitches on the forward pass in the next row, you'll really start to see the pattern emerge. So anytime we work those backward passes, we set ourselves up for the next row. And if you take a close look, kind of pull those apart, we have these tall loops and we have a like an open gap and we have a chain on the top. Of course, we have our foundation chain on the bottom. What you want to get used to in working in Tunisian crochet is we're going to be working with each of these loops and that's going to create the stitch. Now they're just like regular crochet, there are all kinds of stitches that you can do. For this particular pattern, we're going to be working with two different types of stitches. One is the what they call the knit stitch, which is actually if you if you are a knitter, it looks like the stockinette. The other stitch we're going to be working with is the Tunisian cross stitch. So we have the Tunisian knit stitch and the Tunisian cross stitch. We're going to start off the pattern by working with the Tunisian knit stitch, and we're going to do that for four rows. Then we're going to add a row of the Tunisian cross stitch and repeat. Now, how do we do the Tunisian knit stitch? 
what we want to do is we want to find the second loop. So this loop on this side is just going to be a side stitch. Similarly as the one on the end, you know where we did the um, yarn over and the pull through one created the edge stitch over here. So we have to match that and do the edge stitch on that side. Plus we have our working yarn coming from that loop so we couldn't work in it even if we wanted to. So find that first loop. If you're looking at it straight on, you just see a bar. If we turn it a little to the side, see that little opening there? That's how we can tell it's a loop. And so we want to work our hook into the loop. And we're gonna do so, it's going to go from front to back. So we put our hook into the center of that loop and then out the back of the work. Now this is going to be pretty difficult for you to see on camera. Let's see if I can get a closer image. So we have that loop right here. I'm gonna put my hook directly into the center of that hole and out the other side. Okay, so just like that then we'll yarn over and pull up a loop. And it's really difficult to tell when you have just your first few rows here, or just the first row in general. But what this does is it pulls the loop from you know front to back, it turns it so that we kind of have a V, or you can see the V right there, and that's gonna form what looks like that knit stitch. And so we want to work that through all of these bars. So work directly into, out the other side, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Okay, you can kind of see the shape taking form. And just like all forward passes, you're going to keep the loops on your hook. You may also notice that as you have a few stitches worked in this way, you're going to notice that they're going to start to turn naturally for you. See how when even though we're looking at it straight it doesn't we we can we can see both of the the bars there so it's sort of turning on us it makes it a lot easier for us to work this stitch so it's usually just the first couple that are more difficult than the rest And it's okay for things to get bunched up on your hook. So if you want to stretch it out, you can. I find that it's easier if I scrunch it up just so I have something to hold on to and I'm not holding on to the work itself. So that's just a personal preference for me. You'll find what works for you. Tunisian in general is just a, it's a different technique so it does take a little getting used to. You're gonna have to work out what works for you, what's comfortable, and over time, you'll figure out what works. Okay, so when you've reached the end and we have just one stitch left to work into, this stitch is really, really important. And we have to work our very last stitch into specific loops of that last stitch. Now, if you recall with me, the first stitch of that backward pass, remember where we did the yarn over and we pulled through one? Well, 
that translates as a chain. So it just looks like a chain. If we look at this really close, you're thinking, yeah, this doesn't look like much of anything at all. I promise, though, it will get easier to spot the more you do this. So we're looking for something that looks like a chain. I'm going to grab a darning needle here just so I can point it out to you. If you look at this bar right here, that is one of the side loops of a chain. And you see that lump right there? That is the back bar of the chain. So it, if you're familiar with you know, the stitch anatomy of a chain, we have three loops that we can work in. These are two of them. And what we always want to do for Tunisian crochet, doesn't matter what pattern you're using, we want to work our last stitch into both of those loops. So the sidebar and the back bar. And if, let's say for a moment, we turn this to the side, you can see how that kind of gives a neater kind of V appearance. That's what's going to end up on the edge of your work. And so you have a cleaner, neater edge. If you were to just work into this one side loop, then you're going to have this open ringlet sort of hole all the way up just this side of the work. It's not going to look that way over here. So what we want to do is we want to work our hook into those two loops to complete the last stitch. Okay, if you need to do it one by one, that's fine. So we caught that one there and then the back bar is usually a little more difficult to get into right there. Then we yarn over and we'll pull through just like normal. And now see how that turns the bar to the side. We still have a stitch that looks like all of the rest of our stitches, which you can't really see on the first row. But that's how you're going to have a cleaner edge. That's one of the biggest questions that comes up in Tunisian crochet is how do I make this this edge clean and not have little holes. Well, my friends, that is your answer. You have to work in those two loops of that very last stitch. Now that we've completed that first forward pass, now what we want to do is work on the backward pass. And this is the same as what we did before. We want to yarn over, pull through one. There we go, we're creating that chain. If you're having problems figuring out how to work that last stitch, you know, the one that we just talked about, at this stage, I would recommend using a stitch marker. And since we have that stitch we just created, and we can see the loops really well. So I can see this is that sidebar, the back bar is right there. Go ahead and put a stitch marker right there and leave it and that way you'll know where you need to work your last stitch. Okay, now go on and finish by yarn over and pull through two and then just do that all the way down. So when you finished your backward pass, your work should look something like this. We can't quite see the pattern yet because our work is a little too short, so we're just going to keep going. We want to have a total of four rows of this Tunisian knit stitch. We've completed our first one here. We're going to be working on the second one. So this is the same as what we did before. We're just working our hook in the middle and out the back. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, here we go. You can kind of see the pattern starting there if you're familiar with what that knit stitch looks like. And so, like I said, this is just the same. We're going to work all of the stitches onto our hook. No changes here.
Now once you've reached that last stitch, if you've put your stitch marker there, then that is going to tell you exactly where you need to work. Now you can probably get your hook in there with the stitch marker. Yarn over and then pull up your loop and then you can remove the stitch marker. That way you know you have it in the proper place. Now I would recommend doing that until you really get the hang of it. Now I don't have to use the stitch markers anymore, but I've been doing this technique for a while. So you might want to work it through maybe the first half of the, the scarf. And if you notice a difference in the edge, the, the appearance, after you've stopped using the stitch marker, then you just know that you're working in the incorrect loops. And so you may just keep using the stitch marker until you, until you get it right. Okay, so we're going to be working that back pass again. This is going to be the exact same. Yarn over, pull through one only. Add your stitch marker here if you feel like you need to do so. I'm going to keep going. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and just do that all the way down. Okay, now if we hold our work up and sort of kind of fight that curl there, then you can see we have two rows of the Tunisian knit stitch. We'll go ahead and point them out just so you can see. The first one is a little more difficult to see, but you see this little V right here? That's our first row, and this we just completed our second row. And now with this opening here, this backward pass that we just made, we're ready to start on the third row. Again, I mentioned that we're going to be doing four rows of that Tunisian knit stitch. We're going to start on the third one here. So this is exactly the same as before. those two loops and then work your hook into them, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're going to do a back pass just like always. You know, one cool little trick I'll show you too. If you're if you're doing this and you're watching TV or you get distracted and you're not sure if you pulled through two loops, there is a way of figuring that out. So I just yarned over and I pulled through two, and you can see that's one, and then my second one is right there. So see where my working yarn is coming up? There's two loops on that. That means I yarned over and I pulled through two. Let's say I accidentally yarn over and I pulled through three, which happens. Now you can see that there are three loops sitting on that working yarn. And so what we've done there, if we don't correct it, is we've dropped a stitch. So when we yarn over and we pull through more than two, we're decreasing our stitches. What I will usually do to correct that is to carefully work my hook back in that loop that I didn't want to pull through. And then if you just kind of shift it over there, we just now have two loops on our hook. Okay, so that's one way of troubleshooting if you accidentally yarn over and pull through three. You do have to be really careful. If you end up 
trying to correct it and you don't do so in the right way, then you may have to just rip back and work some more, you know, your forward pass stitches again. So now at this point we have three rows of our Tunisian knit stitch and we're starting on the fourth one. So what we want here is we're going to do the same thing. So we want to work our stitches exactly the same as that Tunisian knit stitch that we've done on the last three rows. Now what we need to do is work on our backward pass, and again this is the same as before. Yarn over, pull through that first loop only, place your stitch marker there if that's what you're going with, and then yarn over and pull through two all the way down. Okay, so what we have done up until this point is we have finished up our four rows of our Tunisian knit stitch. So I'm going to point those out just so you get familiar with how to count these rows. It's easier if you can count them than it is to memorize which row you're on. Sometimes if you get distracted or you can typically lose your place. So I usually find any of the lines. So just moving down from where this bar is here then moving down, that's where I'm going to count. And I'm going to count what looks like the little V's. So I have my, let's see, move over here. So I've got my first row right here. So that's one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then that backward pass, what we did was we set ourselves up for the last repeat in this pattern. So we have the four Tunisian knit stitch. We're going to finish off this pattern repeat by doing a Tunisian cross stitch. And we'll demonstrate how to do that next. For the Tunisian cross stitch, we're not going to be working through the work like we did with the Tunisian knit stitch where we went through the bar and out the other side. But we're just going to be working in the front of the loop. So just the front loop here, that bar that you see. So as the name implies, this stitch has a cross to it. So instead of us working into the very next bar that's available, we're going to skip that one and place our hook just under the bar of that third stitch over. Then yarn over and pull up a loop. And our work looks like this. Now we want to go back to that bar that we skipped. So that second stitch, and then place our hook directly under that loop, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Now the pattern doesn't really come out until you get through the backward pass, but the idea is you want those two loops to cross over and form an X. So the next two that we're going to be working on are these two here. We're going to skip that first bar, place our hook under the next bar, pull up a loop, and when you do that, that's, that other bar kind of gets a little smaller, so you just want to keep an eye on it and make sure you're working into the correct bar. You can use your stitch marker again if you need help. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, and so that's really all there is to the Tunisian cross stitch. We're going to be doing that all the way across the row. And again, this is where we had to work in an even multiple. 
because we're working with groups of two stitches now. So once you get a few stitches going, you can really see the pattern emerge. From a distance, you can clearly see those cross stitches now. Just want to keep an eye on your work as you're going. That way you can catch any mistakes before, they, before you move on. Now if you have been counting correctly, when you come to the end, you should have three left. So we have the two for our group and then the one stitch on the end. That's what we want. So work your last cross stitch. That one a little messed up. And now we'll work our last stitch in those two side loops just like we have been doing. Now that finishes our pattern repeat. So from here on out, we're just going to repeat these five rows. So we have our four Tunisian knit stitch and then our cross stitch. Now one thing you can notice here is we have a bit of roll going on. And that is very characteristic for Tunisian crochet and knitting alike. So the purpose of that or the reason why we experience this rolling is because we're constantly working in the same direction. And what I mean by that is we're not turning our work every row like we would if we were working with normal uh, crochet. So Tunisian crochet takes on a lot of the same characteristics that knitting does and that's one of the things that it's known for is that it has a rolling on the edge. And there are a couple things that we can do to minimize that. First thing is to watch your tension. Make sure that you have a looser tension than normal and that's going to help with the rolling and it's always a good practice to go up a hook size from what you would normally use from the yarn. So that's why we used a slightly bigger hook here, the five and a half millimeter. The last trick that you can do to minimize this rolling is to wet block. And I do have a tutorial on wet blocking. If you're unfamiliar with that, you can check that out at behookedcrochet.com slash block your project. Now I will quickly demonstrate the backward pass, even though it's exactly the same as before. And then I'm gonna set you free. What we want to do at this point is we want to repeat these five rows until we run out of our first skein of yarn. Okay, so from here, all you're going to do is start again with the Tunisian knit stitch. And that's again where we work our hook into the middle of that loop and then back out the other side, yarn over and pull up your loop. 
Okay, so again, this is your pattern repeat. Go ahead and repeat these last five rows just over and over until you run out of your first skein of yarn. At that point, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about how to bind on our new skein because that can sometimes get tricky. And we also want to play with the color a little bit because we want to keep our color variation as close to, as possible from where we left off on the first skein. So I've reached the end of my skein here and my scarf measures approximately 34 inches long now with that first skein of Red Heart Unforgettable. So I ended here on this rich red color and one thing you want to keep in mind when you are transitioning you want to do so at the end of your backward pass. So that's where I'm at at this point here is I'm at the point where I just pulled through my last loop here on the end. Okay, so you want to get yourself set up there. If that leaves you a little bit extra, don't worry about that. And then we have to play with our new skein of yarn. In order for our color transitions to match up, what I like to do personally is start at a point on the skein of yarn that's closest to where I ended up. So in doing that, I'm just noticing where my new skein starts off in the color repeat. So it's on this bright orange color. And then just looking at how it's transitioning, it's going from the bright orange into like a red color and into like the mauve sort of color. So keeping that in mind, I just want to look at where I ended up before. So I had this really bright orange color, which looks a whole lot like this part here. And then it's transitioning to the same red that I see in the middle. So I actually got really lucky here. I don't have to cut off too much of this skein. Now usually I don't waste any of this. I'll just simply wrap it up and then I might use this for a smaller project or some kind of accent in the future. Okay, so just a quick comparison. I'm really close to the same color that I ended up with. And so it might not be perfect, but it should be pretty well lined up from here. Now what I like to do when I bind on a new color is I like to use a slip knot, and that just gives you a little extra security. That way if your ends do work themselves out, you at least have the slip knot to fall back on. So I'm keeping that loop on my hook here where I ended up before and then just place the new loop on your hook and simply pull that through the loop that was on your hook. There we go. Now what I'm going to do just right after before I start anything else, I'm going to tie these two ends off. So this is my new tail, this is my old skein of yarn that was left. And I'm just going to tie them in a knot again. So this is going to secure the loop so it doesn't move around on us. It's also going to secure the color join so we don't lose our scarf at some point in the future. So from now, everything else will be exactly the same. I ended up with my the back pass after my cross stitch row and now I'm just going to continue on just as though everything were normal. And so once we get finished with our scarf we'll weave in those tails at the very end. For now we can just leave them where they are and then just continue to work our scarf. So we're about halfway finished and we, we, what we want to do at this point is just finish crocheting up our scarf until we've reached the end of now our second skein of yarn working in the same stitch pattern repeat. Okay so off camera I went ahead and finished crocheting my scarf got through that second skein of yarn. I do have a little bit remaining and the one thing that you want to be aware of is where you stop. The one thing I kept in mind when I stopped was what color I started on 
at the very beginning. So it's sort of like a blue color at the very beginning. And so I wanted to kind of get this one as close to the blue color. Now it's a little green here, but it does transition into the blue. And so by the time we do our bind off, it should match fairly well. Now I'm doing that because for this scarf, I'm going to sew the two ends together and make it like a loop scarf or an infinity scarf. Now you can work this either way. If you want a straight scarf, then we'll just go through this bind off and then you'll weave in your ends, block, and you're done. The other thing you'll notice here is that I stopped after doing a cross stitch row. And I did that once again because we started with our four rows of the Tunisian knit stitch. And again, since I'm sewing this together, this will maintain the pattern. I'll have that cross stitch and then I'll have the four of the um, the Tunisian knit stitch rows. So it should match up fairly well. Now no matter what you're going to do for this scarf, if you're going to sew the ends together or if you're going to leave it a straight scarf, at this point I need for you to have your work on your hook like, like you see here. So you're going to have all of your loops worked on your hook. Now since we can't just bind off at this point and leave it, there are a couple things that we need to do in order to bind off. And the first thing we want to do is work our backward pass just like before. So yarn over, pull through that first loop, and then yarn over and pull through two all the way down. Okay, once you've worked that, technically you could bind off here, but that wouldn't really be correct because if you see your, if you see the, the row that we just did, we have all of these open holes. Now, this kind of is a cool texture if you're looking for something like that, if you want sort of a decorative edge, but technically this isn't the correct place to bind off. What we need to do is do what they call a slip stitch bind off. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So we're going to still work in the same place that we have been for the Tunisian knit stitch. So I'm just going to go in between that loop and go out the back. And then yarn over and pull up. So this, up to this point, this is exactly the same. Here's where the difference comes in. We're going to take this loop that we just pulled up and we'll pull it through that loop on our hook. And that's creating a slip stitch. So the reason why we have to work our stitches in the loops like this is because it's pulling that chain on the top downward. It's pulling the stitches open. So it's maintaining the pattern while allowing us only one loop on our hook so we can bind off when we get to the other end of the scarf. So you'll just repeat that all the way across. Now once you make it to your last stitch, you're going to work this one the same. You want to go in the same two loops that you have been before, and we're still going to slip stitch, so pull that through and through. Now once you finish that, we can go ahead and bind off. And if you have made the decision to sew the two ends of your scarf together, you want to bind off leaving a tail that is about twice the length that the scarf is wide. So I usually just take a lot extra just to be on the safe side. This is the strand that we're going to use to tie the two ends together. And then I'll just pull that loop through the loop on my hook. And there, that finishes the bind off. So what I would recommend at this point is to go ahead and, and weave in your ends except for this one here where we just did our bind off unless you're keeping a straight scarf. 
if you're keeping it straight go ahead and, and weave that in otherwise just weave in the end from the beginning and then over here where we had to join on our second skein now I like to weave in my ends on the back side and you probably notice as you work that this is not a reversible stitch so it looks a little bit different on the other side so this I'm calling the back of the scarf and so I'm just going to weave in my ends through the stitches on the back of the scarf now since rolling and kind of leaning what we'll call is an inherent trait of Tunisian crochet the one thing that I use in order to correct this is to wet block and I do have a tutorial available on the different methods of wet blocking for this I would suggest using the wet blocking but you can explore the other options as well you can find that demonstration at behookedcrochet.com slash block your project I'd recommend checking that out I'm gonna go ahead and block my project and then when I do get ready to sew these together all I'm going to do is turn it so that I have the basically the wrong side facing out so I would flip the scarf so that the the right sides are facing towards each other and then I'm going to whip stitch this together that'll turn it into a loop scarf it will conceal the stitching a little bit since I'm doing it on the wrong side but of course first I need to block a little bit because as you can see the ends are wanting to curl this wraps up our tutorial on the knit alike scarf it's a free pattern that's available at behookedcrochet.com you can get that free pattern at behookedcrochet.com slash knit alike scarf on behalf of behookedcrochet.com I'm your host and guide Brittany I've had a great time with this tutorial I hope you really enjoyed this project and please leave your comments below let me know what you think post a picture of it on Instagram using hashtag behooked I'd love to see how your scarf turns out until next time we'll see you soon